This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. We continue in our series this morning looking at the Sermon on the Mount. And this section is maybe the most powerful and maybe the most important part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is speaking to these crowds of people that are sitting on the hillsides, but particularly he is speaking directly to his 12 disciples. And he's got something very pointed to say to them. And he uses two metaphors to convey the speech. Two, salt and light. Now what in the world does salt and light have in common? Anybody got an idea? Salt and light, what they have in common is this. Light dispels darkness, and salt will dominate any other taste. Ever thought about that? Salt will dominate any other taste. It will take a bland food and make it burst. Chefs talk about when you put salt in it, it makes the flavors blossom. Right, Mike? They, they bloom. Right? And you get... And what was once a rich, dark uh, gumbo becomes a much more flavorful by just adding a pinch of salt. Salt has been, um, since really the beginning of human civilization, a vital part of our being. Now, i got to be honest with you, I don't like salt. I don't. I'm not a salty person. I like stuff bland. How many of you like over salt, like you salt everything, you salt your salt? Anybody, anybody like that? Yeah. My daddy was like that. He would salt everything. He'd put salt on everything. And, and I, I don't like salt, right? It's just, a, it's just a thing, right? I don't like swimming in the ocean. Why? Because it's salt water, right? Well, sharks are, yeah, but I, I yeah. You, you know, I used to be an attorney, right? You know why sharks won't bite attorneys? <laughs> Professional courtesy. Um, pretty good. Um, I don't, I don't eat salt on anything, but I understand the power of salt in the you in the human world. Wars have been fought over salt. Trade routes to the Far East were forged over salt and other spices. As a matter of fact, there is a common phrase. Are you worth your salt? You know where that comes from? Because Roman soldiers used to be paid in salt because it was like currency. It was like money because it was so valuable and so rare. And if you were worth your daily wages, you were worth your salt. But Jesus has a warning here. He says to all of his followers, you're the salt of the earth. You are salt in the world. But if it has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by people. In other words, he's saying, if you can't make the world around you more like the kingdom of God, if you're not doing the things that I did, if you're not living in such a way that you're improving the world around you, if you're not spicing up the world, if you're not making it more flavorful, making the flavors bloom, if you are bringing destruction and not life, then you are useless. I mean... He says we are worthy to be taken out and trampled underfoot. Just thrown out. Those are strong words from Jesus. I had a guy come to me years ago when I was a youth director in Water Valley. He said, preacher, I come to church every Sunday. I, I give. And I try to lead a decent life. But I don't volunteer for very much. I don't get involved. And I just don't like talking to my neighbors about Jesus. 
Like, I, I feel like they'll think I'm pushy. Do you, know, do you know pushy people that like to, you know? He, doesn't like, he didn't like pushy people. He said, I, I don't want to... I don't want to be looked at like I'm an Amway salesman. Do y'all know what Amway is? Okay, so if you don't know what Amway is, it's multi-level marketing, right? Pyramid schemes. Think, um, um, who are the ladies that drive around the pink Cadillacs? Mary Kay. Think, um, what's, what's the one that has, what's the people that have the, the drink that you make and they sell you these diet drinks? Um, huh? Herbalife. Yeah, Herbalife, there you go. Yeah. I mean, the, he didn't want he didn't want to be or in a different generation. I don't want to be known as the fuller brush man. You know the guys knocking on your doors trying to say that or maybe I had a guy come to my house when I was 8 years old trying to sell us encyclopedias. You know? Yeah. Mama sick sick the dog on him. Uh, we we didn't realize he was not in a car, he was on a bicycle. That's a long story. Uh Right? He didn't like talking to people. He, he said, I just live my faith quietly. I said, okay, pretty good. I appreciate that. It's better not living a faith at all. And then I turned to this and I said, well, what do you do with this one? I mean, what do you do with that? I mean, what do you do, church, with the scripture that says, if you've lost your saltiness, if you're not leavening the loaf, if you're not making the world taste better, then you're not good for anything. And the thing that scares me the most is when it says, if it has lost its saltiness, how will it be made salty again? That scares me to death. What if I lose my saltiness? Have I lost the ability for God to use me? Have, have I lost my faith? Have I become a detriment? I don't know the answer to that. I just know that I don't want to be that. I don't want to lose my saltiness. On a broader scale, the church in the world today, I think, has somehow lost its saltiness. Because we think that we have to live our faith privately. We don't discuss religion and politics in the world. We don't speak about those things. We don't express our faith in the marketplace of ideas because it scares us and people may look at us as weird, right? Has anybody ever looked at you and you just felt like they think I'm weird? <laughs> you ever, ever done that? Ever, that ever happened to you? Donna, there's, no, never mind. I don't even ask that. <laughs> Thanks for being on the front row. I, I go through that all the time. I go through that in the drive through line at McDonald's. Uh, I, I don't like being looked at as weird, but I know people that melt when they think people are looking at them as odd. Right? Can't, I, Anna Claire marched with the Lewisburg Patriot Band yesterday. They got sixth place overall, made it to the finals last night, sixth place overall, third place in guard. Great day. I am sore because I've been pushing and pulling tarps and bells, and I'm just like, uh, And we got in, at, I got, at, got in about 2.30 this morning. So, um, and if you see me limping, it's because I'm old and I got a bad hip now and a bad ankle. But I, I, was, I was trying to get Anna Claire checked out so she could hook up with her mama and, and the other two, and they spent the night in Jackson last night, and I rode back on the band bus. Um, so, um, hey, I didn't have to drive. Um, but I was trying to check Anna Claire out, and she's got to get her uniform and her hat box and her horn and all her junk and, and all this stuff. And I'm standing there, can I help you, baby? Can I help you? Can I help you? And she said, Dad, get out of here. You're embarrassing me. I said, why? She said, because you're in the way. <laughs> oh, and so I had to go move. You know, some people get embarrassed when anybody pays attention to them. We do too, right? We just would like to live our faith and nobody pay attention to us, right? But we have to live an out loud faith. 
we have to live a faith that is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And yes, people will look at you like you're weird. It's okay. Yes, people will talk about you and say bad things about you. Yes, you will suffer all kinds of ill repute and, and maybe persecution. Praise God. Because in the same way they persecuted him. In the same way they persecuted the saints that went before us. If all I have to put up with in this life is somebody that I don't really know or particularly don't even, I might know but I don't like, looks at me like I'm odd, well, whoop de doo <laughs> Nobody's hanging me on a piece of wood along the Appian Way and light me on fire to light the road from Rome to Naples, which is what Nero did to Christians. I, I mean, at least nobody's throwing me to lions which is what Herodian did. At least I'm not being killed in concentration camps like what happened to Dietrich Bonhoeffer in World War II. At least I'm not being slaughtered on the streets and beheaded, whether I'm in the possession of Boko Haram in North Africa or in the hands of the mullahs in Iran, or just sent off to re-education camps in China because I won't kowtow. I, I, I got it easy. You just think I'm weird. That's okay. I'll be weird for Jesus. May my life be salty. Because here's the great thing about salt. You can take just a little bit of it and make everything taste better. You can sprinkle in a little bit. How many of you like to bake? Put a little salt in your bacon, do you? Right? Just a touch. And it changes everything. A little bit in a piece of soup. How many of you like chocolate? How many of you have had chocolate with sea salt? Doesn't it make it explode? Right? Just a little salt changes the flavor and complexion of anything. And we have a, we have a scriptural authority and responsibility to be leavening the world. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people let a light in their house and put it under a basket. But they put it on a lampstand. It get light to all who are in my house. Your light must shine before people in such a way that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If you ever put a candle on the floor versus putting it up high, maybe a lamp, the reason we, there's a very complicated but fairly simple, actually, um, scientific explanation why that is, but you put a light higher up, it provides more light, right? John, would you come and explain that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Going from an engineer over there telling me why that is the case, right? But you put the light high, it shines, and I, I know we don't like to draw attention to ourselves. God wants us to be humble right? And not attention sinking, right? But we still have to have the light in the world. We shine that light. No one will know about Jesus unless we tell them. No one will know the truth of Jesus unless we tell them. And no one will understand the principles of Jesus unless we speak them out loud. We have to be the light bearers. We got to raise that light, right? And it shines in the darkness. You don't put it under a bushel. You shine it. There's some verses we left out, and there's about 18, 20, 20, 20 or so verses in this little light of mine. You can sing it forever. But one of them is, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. The last one is the one I love the most. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Are you a beacon on a hill? Are you a place that sends out light to the world? Do you make the world a brighter place? Do you leaven it with the salt of your life? I, I was a big Ronald Reagan fan when I was a kid. My, my dad was a diehard Democrat, and 
And my one, I, I didn't party. I didn't go running around. I didn't do crazy stuff when I was a kid. You know what my run, one rebellion was? I, I told Daddy if I could, I'd vote Republican. <laughs> Broke the man's heart. Right? That was my rebellion as a child. Right? Right? I, it was, that was just broke my heart, my dad's heart. But I, I was a big Reagan fan, and I, my favorite Reagan quote was where he talks about, I think in his um, second election, that America is a shining city on a hill, the last beacon of truth and hope in this world. And that touched me, and I didn't really realize it until I got older and started studying this passage. Um, Reagan's speechwriter um, was um, uh, Peggy Noonan, right? And she wrote that, right, that phrase. And she pulled it directly from Scripture, right? Um, shining city on a hill. That's great. It's good if your country can do that, beacon of freedom for the world. But every church on every corner should be a bright and shining beacon for Jesus. We are the beacon to a hurting world. Where there is pain and suffering, the church should be there. Where there are lost people, we should be there. Where there is suffering and pain and death, we should be there. Where there are hurting people, we should be there. Where there are unwanted and unloved children, we should be there. Where there are places of no hope, we should be the light that says, yes, there is hope in this world. Now, I love America. I'm a proud patriot citizen. But in the, world, in the end, the world will not be saved by America or any other country. It will only be saved by Jesus Christ. And we must be that shining city on the hill. We must be the beacon for hope and freedom. We must be that. Wherever we are in the world, the church has to be that. And in the end, that will make all the difference in the world. Go be the salt. Don't lose your saltiness. Go shine your light in all the dark places of the world. Go and be a beacon of hope. Just like Jesus called us to be. Salt can permeate every taste. But the opposite of light is not dark. Right? There is no such thing as dark. You can't go on and flip the switch of dark. You don't have a dark light and flip it on, right? Darkness is the absence of light. And when you flip on the switch, every corner is illuminated. When you flip on the switch of the church, may every corner of this world be lit up and warmed in its glow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. As we close out our service, let me pronounce this benediction over us and one correction. It's good to know that people are listening by video. I know people are listening by video because my family is listening by video. And Anna Claire texted me <laughs> and wanted me to say to you all, she was never embarrassed. She just wanted me to move because I was blocking things, but that I never embarrass her. So um, I'm getting fact-checked in the middle of the sermon, uh, but glad y'all are listening. Love y'all. See you in a little bit. And thanks to all of you that are watching now or maybe weeks, days, months later. Thanks for checking us out. Thanks for tuning in. We'd sure love to have you come check us out at 9.30 on Sunday mornings right here in Cochran, Mississippi. Put that into Google Maps. We're across from the Mexican restaurant behind the, the um, chiropractic clinic and the liquor store. Um, <laughs> where we are. Um, for, now. for now, that's where we are. We'd love to have you come check us out. Come join us here if you're watching. 
you are invited. If you think, I don't have good enough clothes, eh, it's okay, right? If you, don't, if you think, I, I don't know anything about church, that's okay. If you think, I can't sing, neither can I, come on. Um, nobody will judge, nobody will think anything of you. We have donuts and coffee in the back, although we did not have donuts this morning, and that was my fault because I got in at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, so, um, but Miss Dot's not here, so I'm off the hook this morning. Oh, okay. Thank y'all for being here. Do you know God loves you? I do too. Go vote Tuesday. Go pray tomorrow. Pray all day. Pray all night. And pray on the days after that peace will reigneth in our land. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great Sunday. Please stay for Sunday school somewhere.